Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, our midweek break to sit back, relax, talk about all the fun stuff going on in the world of Linux, open source, all that fun stuff. I'm Vince Stone, that is Joe Bryant, and that is one Pedro Mateus, and everyone Hello. being super awesome, joining us at home. It's kind of fun. Hey, mm -hmm. what's up, everyone? Are we into new stuff? We're up to great stuff. Pedro, you didn't write anything, so make something up on the spot. What have you been up to, man? Uh, I went to the moon with... Uh, uh, I can't remember anyone that's not like really offensive. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, Dr. Disrespect there. That's the least offensive oh, one I can think there of. There we go. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that was the creative stylings of uh, Pedro Mateus. Um, <laughs> fantasy author. Ask me again Legend. on Saturday. <laughs> give, me, give me a few days. <laughs> Joe, what's new? Did anything fun? Oh, yes. I am so excited. So this morning, my interview with Big Daddy Linux on Linux Spotlight was released and where I got to talk about my journey into Linux, my history with Linux Gamecast and LWW, our wonderful community, and I get to dish out the dirt on Ven, Pedro, and Jordan. Nah, not really, but all in fun. <laughs> I love those guys. <laughs> Inaccurate dirt, I might add. Something, something. <laughs> journalist. Yeah. yeah. Go listen to it, man. Don't just make stuff up, man. I, mean, it is no. I like the part so. where Pedro could fly. I thought that was interesting. I was like, I didn't do that. Aww. I mean, honestly, it Pedro's answered a few wonderful. questions, but still. <laughs> man. So. <laughs> Over here at LGC Actual, I've been playing around doing some fun things. Uh, one of the things, um, an adventure, if you follow me on the social medias, on the Twitters, I played around with Twitter. Uh, posting the things, I was like, I, I need to get CUDA 10 installed on Debian 10. This is going to be an adventure. Turns out it wasn't too bad. But the version, if you download the CUDA, just the binary, and you install that, it ships with a driver. And you naturally assume, let's make sure we use that one. It's been tested with the version of the NVIDIA driver, as one does. Everything works. Mm. That was great till I went to use it. What I wanted to use it for was because I needed some uh, fast JPEG decoding for something I'm working on. And it's like, no, the version mismatch. Uh, the, the, yeah, it doesn't work with NVIDIA. It's like, wow, really? What? <laughs> oh. um, so I, I pulled up the uh, NVIDIA beta driver for uh, Vulkan, shoved that in there, and then I had to do the thing where I pulled it all back and reinstalled the stock stuff so I could yep. have that just in case <laughs> oh, something went horribly yeah. wrong. But that worked. And spent yesterday playing around with, uh, we, we, we got this. This is the thing. This little cart. Yeah, awesome. In, inside that's a license D for DaVinci. And uh, mm -hmm. turns out, if you're really patient on eBay, you can get one of these without paying the high price. It only took me like five months. So... <laughs> really patient <laughs> it turned into a matter of principle dude i was like i it was the game it was the chase that it was already, awesome, already though. put the money back to budget it if it came down it's like fine i'll just buy it but i wanted to get it this way don't get dongles and yesterday i was like i need to learn how to do fusion i need to do the 3d modeling mm -hmm. and animation package that's included awesome. with the da vinci so yeah that was a solid 35 minutes spent making our uh in credits, I know. saw the the goings on in, uh, yeah. in Discord and Twitter. <laughs> it's like figuring out how to get the yes. random number generator set for the flickers, and just yeah, it was like okay, I know how you work now. We're done, and uh, that was that. <laughs> Had a good time. All right. So, yeah, you know, don't you always want to like if you get something like this? Like, I, how do you learn stuff? Normally, I'll just watch a tutorial onto and somebody making something even if i don't care because you'll dig around you'll find all the little parts then you'll go like straight up prof you know your brain will go <laughs> professor nash and get out the red yarn and it's like tie this together and okay even if you don't completely understand it you have the base tools to i can google my yeah. way out of this <laughs> yeah i'm not so good with watching people do it on video but uh yeah Hello, video viewers. How are you doing? I, I do it on video, and I do it very much like begrudgingly. Like, I don't like doing pause, rewind, rewind. Okay, okay, this thing, this thing. Because some people are not natural instructors. instructors, mm -hmm. And it was like, yeah. oh, let's just skip this gaping piece of information. I was like, how did we get to here? Then, um, fun times, fun mm -hmm. times. So Awesome, Ben. Um, 
Let's get right into... Also, I learned 6 gigabytes memory RAM. Oh, I love you 2060, but mm, <laughs> ran into that. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but we can render faster. This is great because we can yes. use uh, CUDA <laughs> and now we can use NV Encode and I'm using X265 HEVC great. encoding for recordings and we can do that in real time. So, oh, kind of fun stuff we're playing around with, learning with, and hopefully it won't burst into flames unlike <laughs> pseudo did earlier yeah. this week he kind of did yeah uh -huh. so uh if you were paying attention on monday you probably saw this bit of news fly by and pseudo flaw lets linux users run commands as root when they're restricted so how this works is basically if you have a pseudo file which is basically excluding all other user accounts from running pseudo commands and only say allowing the root um account to actually run pseudo commands. Well, people figured out that if you pass a user ID of minus one or uh, 42949672952, which is uh, the yeah. unsigned in 32 bit plus one, that's the maximum number of accounts that the, uh, the system was accounting for. If you pass either of those two, you could basically, the command would just return zero because it wouldn't be able to access either of those numbers. And zero, is the root account. So you'd be running everything as root without being able to sudo, supposedly. But it's been fixed now and uh, a lot of the a lot of the distros that I use, like your Ubuntu mates and your Solaces and your Fedoras, they all have it in the repos now. And if for some reason your distro doesn't have it, you need to go talk to people and say, yo, what the heck? <laughs> what, you don't want to live dangerously? Uh, <laughs> I found out about the bug because there's a pseudo app update, as one does in Debian. Usually it's very lonely in Debian 10, a very lonely experience. You're like, you just do it out of curiosity. Yeah. You're like, yeah, is there anything? You know? And I saw pseudo pop up. And then went to the end and I was like, oh, okay. That's kind of yep. a big issue. <laughs> also, I, we don't get to say it much on this show. Thanks, Apple. Um, yeah, yeah, it was an Apple engineer <laughs> that figured that out. Go figure. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. And um, I thought it was cool. Wimpy said that Ubuntu was patched on Monday. Um, mm -hmm. And that was awesome. And I really, you know, they probably shouldn't have released this vulnerability until all the distros passed, patched pseudo first. You know, that that's, I didn't think that was too cool. <laughs> but they're getting it fixed real quick. <laughs> and if you are the single user on the system and run sudo commands as root, this does not impact you in any way. So just yeah, for those uh, businesses. That is an and... <laughs> important thing to bring up. This is yeah. relevant for like multi-user systems like a server. And you yeah. say you don't allow a certain segment of people to use pseudo commands. That's where this would likely be exploited. And uh, to your point, Jill, if they were going to wait <laughs> for all the distros to have it patched, they would never have released uh, the news about the vulnerability. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, that is, and that's usually what happens. They don't even <laughs> release it. <laughs> Responsible disclosure. But yeah. there, there's something to be said. Hey, you might want to fix this while it's out in the wild. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. It's yeah. like, oh look, Very good. this is a thing you should be fixing. Ooh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Keeps them on top of it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's all the security we're going to be covering this week. No, uh, it isn't. <laughs> no, no, it isn't. Yeah. So this is something that we need. Um, this is uh, we have needed collaboration between businesses on unified security measures for quite some time, and now it is here. It's called the Open Cybersecurity Alliance which has been formed and includes uh, dozens of tech companies, including IBM, McAfee, and Oasis. And actually, you know, this is a really good thing because it's, it's like the Academy Software Foundation is uh, um, for Hollywood. And like uh, the Linux Foundation has a lot of these groups, uh, focus groups, just for, you know, collaboration. Maybe open security should be, uh, cybersecurity should be at Linux Foundation. That might be a good idea as well. Um, but anyways, uh, Jason Kirsted, uh, Chief Architect at IBM Security Threat Management, stated, The mission of the OCA is to create a unified security ecosystem where businesses no longer have to build one-off manual integrations between every product, but instead can build one integration to work across across all based on a commonly accepted set of standards and code. 
So, you know, this is, this is like something to, we really uh, need. <laughs> I'd like to interject just to say XKCD927. Now we have 15 competing standards. Dude, there's nothing wrong. Maybe we need like 16. What we have here at the end of the day, I mean, it's IBM security. They're going to be contributing a thing called Sticks Shifter, which yeah. genuinely sounds like something I would have named. And McAfee, <laughs> a... I, Weren't they going to change the name? Because when you think McAfee, you don't yeah. think security mm -hmm. anymore. You think bath salts. <laughs> and you don't think There's open something source. Something about boats. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. Um, they're going to be uh, adding their open DXL. That, uh, it's your standard ontology business. And uh, it's only going to work if companies use it, which they don't have a long history of doing that for interoperability. Mm -hmm. yeah. But hey, man, yeah. it's a start. In, in it user, is. You're not really going to be seeing this, but... Wait, yeah, though, isn't mm -hmm. is what's the state of uh antivirus? Like, what a Windows user, you know what I'm talking about? Like, you would install like mm -hmm. Norton. What, what is there any equivalent like that on Linux these days? I don't look, I'm uh, holding it not that I'm aware. There's a couple of uh, like the same offerings that exist on Windows, uh, they also offer Linux clients. Yeah. No one really uses them, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, uh, there are a couple. But AVG, the thing, Komodo? Yeah, AVG, there we go. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. But yeah, one of the uh, the things that kind of scared me, and precisely because of the whole antivirus software, what they produce, McAfee doing open source as yes. the go-to person <laughs> that most people um, ask to, it's like, can you fix my computer? And I go and have a look at their still running Windows Vista with the uh, expired uh, McAfee internet security license on there. Mm -hmm. uh, it, that's, a, that's a bit of a scary thought, uh, to be honest. McAfee open source. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> so, Debian 11, Bullseye. Um, they're going to, you don't have to worry. I mean, this probably won't be until like mid 2037, but <laughs> be prepared to get rid of. That's right, from your cold dead hands, IP tables, because it's not going to be there, man. Um, mm -hmm. But, okay, I shouldn't say it's not going to be there. It's going to be around for those of you who really, really, really need it. So if you're an IP tables, die hard. Um, good. Firewall D, that's going to be the new business. I know most of you in modern distribution, like, that's been around forever. Fun. This is Debian. This is what I run. It's old. It's a good kind of boring, but... The uh, other of this is like, hey, man, we're just going to be moving over to Firewall D. It, it's going to be helpful, but brings up a point that I really wanted to discuss as are, are the days of like setting up your own custom firewall scripts out of the box. Are those days just really gone for the average user? Mm. Pedro? Uh, that, I mean, <clears throat> okay, what I'm asking, had... when was the last time you manually set up any type of policy? Nope, I can't remember, honestly. It, it was several okay, years ago. <laughs> okay, here, here's an easier one. When was the last time you did that? And it doesn't count if you blown open a port for a multiplayer game to get it working. Because <laughs> <laughs> See, that, <laughs> that I usually go full metal scorched earth and just go, eh, firewall goes off for a little bit, and then it comes back on. <laughs> uh, for me, I was thinking about that, and I, I'm not saying come at me, sis, come at me, bro. I'm, I'm saying, like, it's usually my security is my edge router. Yep, mm -hmm. and uh, usually yeah. having a hardware firewall That's... is the best. Yeah, for good or for ill. Jill, how are you with that, man? Yeah, well, I've I I usually just I also have a switch on my router, so that really having that hardware really helps. Um, but what what's really uh, nice is NF tables was merged into the Linux kernel since uh, version three point thirteen. Um, in 2014. So this this makes sense. It takes Debian a little longer <laughs> to <laughs> update things, but they're getting around to it, <laughs> which is awesome. And we love our Debian. <laughs> it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, you're just going to install UFW anyway, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as a Fedora user, and I have used uh, Firewall D for many, many years now, it's not uh, a bad uh, software firewall implementation. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the things that uh, kind of got to me, because I have Fedora installed on a couple of the laptops, mm -hmm. and I started it up the other day. I can't remember exactly what I was looking for, but I saw a rule that was predefined there called oh, yeah. Steam Streaming. Yep. It's like, 
I, hmm. when did that get there? <laughs> I, yeah. I, I would call up and be like, you know, we can't do that, right? <laughs> it's like okay so even fedora has the uh, the steam rules preset there if you want to enable them <laughs> nice <laughs> let's bounce out of this into this nice little bit of information coming from ours technica all of this is in our show notes and um mm -hmm. this is a detailed look at ubuntu's new experimental zfs installer and they walk through it and i think it's kind of neat it mm -hmm. zfs I think for everyone, for like a home partition, is definitely going to be a thing. But th I mean, this is new hotness, breaking stuff. I mean, the snapshots, just that functionality. That's where I really focus with ZFS because that can be a yeah. real lifesaver <laughs> for people who are allergic to doing proper backups and they don't yeah. take up much space. <laughs> doing great. And the way it <laughs> works is, you know, you do that snapshot, you have that set, and it only grows if things change. I'm like, that's so brilliant. I love it. However, they do point out in the article that you know what it does right now. This thing just boom, installs. It you know it doesn't set up ask you about partitioning or anything like that. It's like I go here, so you know, don't use this. Only test it, and you know don't don't test in production. Does uh, <laughs> no control over how it's going to carve up the disk. You mm -hmm. might be like, oh, there went everything. That's probably not a good idea. I kind of want to play with it. Uh, I still use <laughs> ext4 for my boot drive and um, mm -hmm. all my media drives are XFS because I actually have legitimate reasons for using that. But that snapshot, uh, where are you at with this, mm -hmm. man, with like ZFS when the snapshot versus like ButterFS? Um, mm -hmm. I think the, the whole point of uh, the ZFS snapshots is that they will actually give you that level of um, recoverability that BTRFS sort of kind of should also give you, but doesn't. Mm. Uh, case in point, Strider managed to break uh, two BTRFS installs, and now he hates it. <laughs> 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 but yeah, I did do a uh, ZFS install on uh, Ubuntu Mate. I downloaded the, uh, the last uh, nice. 1910 daily ISO. And yes, you don't get to do anything about partitioning or sizes of the partitions and nothing whatsoever yeah and it's for just... those of you familiar with the original <laughs> steam os installer no oh. yes basically that you pick i want the zfs and it goes all right what username do you want what password do you want there you go <laughs> nothing else <laughs> it for, i i want that i want i want that in everything especially for end user computers that you're going to be giving to someone like yes oh, you know it, it it's on fire burn like click click, click. like there you go yeah yeah copy this paste it into the terminal <laughs> oh okay yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh boy yeah and, and like you were saying you know the, the ubiquity ubiquity installer in debian in uh excuse me in ubuntu is uh not set up yet for the uh zfs but it will be in the future <laughs> so that'll be cool. But um, I think this is awesome. Uh, of course, ZFS snapshotting's ability is one of the reasons that this format is the most loved file system for server and NAS installs. And Ubuntu, including ZFS, will be a boon for server installs, AI, and the cloud. And what's really wonderful is uh, Popey and Wimpy are asking the community to please test the Ubuntu 1910 betas as well as the experimental ZFS builds. And what was nice is Sunday, I enjoyed watching Alan Pope do beta tests install of Ubuntu Eon Ermine and uh, 1910. So, and he really gave me some good tips on doing my own beta tests of Ubuntu in the future. And I've just started playing with the ZFS image. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so that was really cool. And the, and the other special thing about, about the 1910 release is it coincides with, with Ubuntu's turning 15 years old. So that's, that's quite special. <laughs> oh man. Still not old enough to drink. <laughs> Can't tell you to get, get off this lawn. Um, yes. <laughs> that'd be great, man. It gives you beautiful things. Well, I've installed it and then, you know, just do like an NTFS format. I'm like, oh, it's not working. And see how long it takes for <laughs> 
that's brilliant <laughs> i like to see that that that's great technology it's mm -hmm. that yeah that that's something yeah. i look forward to having on my drives for the yes oh when was the last time r sync did it thing and where is mm -hmm. that going to be and dig <laughs> that out, have that moment as opposed to like hey i got this give me a bit of yeah we've let's all done just it. restart this snapshot does that work cool <laughs> and deleting files you know this is so awesome. wipe stuff out because i end up we end up at a show we're like 400 gigs of stuff and oh uh, yeah it's got to get moved around and redone but yeah i'm looking forward to that so mm -hmm. kde open s u s mm -hmm. suzy plasma 517 qt 514 and more Indeed. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, that is uh, very much uh, the lead right there. Uh, OpenSUSE is uh, updating Plasma to 517 and it's still in beta. So I know that's supposed you know. to be conky, but dude, tell me that doesn't look like a green. It looks like a green xenomorph had sexy time with a reindeer. Yeah. Aww. That's a handmade conky. <laughs> Yeah, it was go. just the wrong um, kind of uh, braiding for it. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's uh, they're uh, updating Plasma to 5.17. They do warn it is still in beta, so keep your heads up for that. You can still keep using the current 5.16 implementation, which is, uh, for the most part, working. And they're also upgrading Qt to 5.14, which is kind of important if you're upgrading Plasma to keep your Qt also up to date. That that. That kind of goes without saying. But yeah, I read through it. It's like, okay, open Sue's Leap 15.2. I'm still not even remotely curious <laughs> to ever uh, try Suzy again. Why Admittedly, not? Uh, Aww. because yeah. my last experience with it was a while back. Uh, maybe they have changed, but it was so obtuse. I mean, you want to talk about obtuse um, Linux distros, this is one of them. You either do it their way or the system just goes, mm, no. <laughs> My last experience with OpenSUSE was using the Nuts doll probably in the late yeah. 90s. <laughs> oh, wow. That has Mine been a was long later. Time. It was like 2012 ish. <laughs> it, 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 well, it was moon magic. We're like, there's no way those could work. You can't bootstrap this over the other day. It's like, oh, look at that. That worked. Then I went back to using oh, yeah. it at the time. But <laughs> I have nothing against it. It's just uh, the, the desktop aspect of Suicide's always been, it seems like a little, little squirrely. A little bit, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, to be fair, uh, and Jill will uh, mention this, uh, they do a mm -hmm. very good uh, implementation of um, KDE. Uh, mm -hmm. Even back in the day, that was part of the reason why I was trying it at the time. It's like, best KDE implementation out there. All right, let's, mm -hmm. let's go give it a shot. But nowadays, I'd argue that KDE Neon actually does a much better implementation of it, and it's not anywhere near as obtuse. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh yeah, and I just noticed that KDE Neon had an update recently. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, so OpenSUSE Leap 15.2 will ship with QT 5.12 LTS with Plasma 5.18 and a new kernel. And what's awesome about this is this means there will be full Wayland support with per screen fraction fractional scaling now for the stable branch of OpenSUSE, like that of the rolling release Tumbleweed. Um, and yeah, as Pedro was saying, OpenSUSE has always been one of the best implement implementations of the KDE desktop and the most stable and has been my go-to distro for using KDE. And in fact, I have it here on my uh, Blade server. I've used it for uh, doing uh, rendering, network rendering animation. So, and I enjoy it. In fact, I just upgraded it uh, within the last few months. <laughs> it works well. Yay. Okay. <laughs> Pretty neat. <laughs> so are you convinced, Pedro, you're going to install um, OpenSUSE tomorrow, right? Oh, uh, hell no. <laughs> oh, I, thought we got, I thought we got him this time. Oh, almost. Nope. I have to worry about it. <laughs> Kaden Live, new version. Yay. This is great. So Kaden Live 19.08.2 is out with lots of performance improvements, bug fixing, and crash fixing. Okay. Yay! I gotta say this. Let's work on this website, Kitty. Uh, yeah, that, that the scrolling is still <laughs> jank. <laughs> jank. Hey, yes. do, do you know how to, if you block all scripts, it runs. It actually scrolls correctly. This oh, is yeah, okay. not a new issue either. You I just can said, hear I, the JavaScript cry as you dude. scroll. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, don't go. <laughs> That's okay. 
So they, you know, like I said, they fixed tons of bugs and uh, some crashes. And among them is uh, the track effects not working when a clip is added at the end of the track or if if the last clip is resized. Um, that that's working now. Um, that used to always be an issue because you'd put your clips together and you put the last one in and, and the effect wouldn't transfer over to the last clip. That was a very annoying. And the speed effect has has never worked correctly in the timeline and they said that was fixed. So it doesn't bounce back and forth. The image doesn't bounce back and forth from one track to the next. That's very helpful. <laughs> And uh, my, the, probably the, one of the most important things that was fixed was a, a crash. So when resizing a composition in Caden Live, um, uh, it would frequently crash. So I would actually end up making a new composition with the desired resolution and then pasting my clips and effects in from the original comp. And uh, yeah, I was really happy that was fixed. And by the way, that's also an issue with Adobe Premiere and Final Cut. So Caden Live fixing that is is great. <laughs> so it's awesome. That's awesome. To hear. They, they keep on, you know, just really adding polish to Caden Live. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> which I think is really. What's your favorite nonlinear video editor, Pedro? Since you're the you keep asking me that question. <laughs> I think this time I'll because say... I, I know it makes for a good bit for the people at home going, Pedro doesn't even... What? Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't touch that side. So, uh... Okay, hang on. Easier what, question. Which one... Do, what, what do you have installed? You have to accidentally have got one installed, be it Olive or Katie. I have, um... Shotcut installed. Nice. Trick question. FFmpeg. <laughs> I have that one installed too. Yes, yeah, it's <laughs> not really video. Uh, so I, I got to do my broken record time, but we all know, you know, I love mm -hmm. um, only Katie in live. That's my favorite video editor of all times, Aww. and this is, comes from completely unbiased perspective or opinion yes. from anything else. Uh, uh, you okay? Uh, is the chest hair finally coming out? You're a bit uh, itchy there. You ben? can't grow hair on steel. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was stone. Oh, well. <laughs> Quinn, you think people are made out of non-organic material. This is an ongoing issue with you. Anyway. So I wanted to play around with um, this latest version. You know, I was like, hey, man, we're going to try this out. Because I still use KDN Live for um, like really small projects like mm -hmm. making our credits. I was doing that before we went live. I was like, oh, I got to make our credits for the show. So I get that. I record it in OBS and boop, boop, snip, snip, boom. Rendered out. But. Since uh, mm -hmm. we did get uh, DaVinci and we unlocked some stuff uh, hardware-wise, I did a test last week, and what we're recording right now is H.265. Uh, that's lossless. So I grabbed the latest app image. Good on them. It's right there. Didn't have to play around. It's mm -hmm. on their web zone. Nice. Like, boom, let's grab that, download it, launch, no problems. And I tested it with our the first segment of this show we do on Saturday is LGC Weekly, or gaming show. And that's like a, it's, it's 27 minutes, 24 seconds. That's the clip link. So 1080p60 recorded like that. And it has a PCM S16 L wave audio. All right. And I rendered it. I put it in KDN Live. I was like, okay, I'm not going to do anything to you. Got the video, got the audio. Render. It's like, make me my video. And I just need, you know, H264 high profile this is what I'm going to do. And it says, okay, I'm going to do it. Now, that render for that 23 minute video was going to be, you no, know, this is it's decoding because you got to keep in mind the original videos, and it's now on H.265, which was hardly compressed, but even in lossless, but it's really small. On the 1920X Threadripper, it was going to take 39 minutes and 36 seconds. So mm -hmm. not able to do it in real time, you know, because that, that was always my holy grail. Yeah. Like if I could just do it and it only took an hour to render the show, uh, that would be great. So <laughs> I threw it over in DaVinci, which was, you know, that was 24 threads because somebody's going to write it. It's like, well, you need to say it was set for 24 threads on the thread. Right? You know, <laughs> I'm familiar with using Katie in live. We did hundreds of shows with it. I threw it over mm -hmm. in DaVinci, utilizing um, same X264 out and utilizing CUDA compute and the NV encode engine with DaVinci. And that same clip 
was six minutes and 37 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hardware and coding. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is where I take a little bit of a break. Because I should. Because I always... Uh -huh legitimately applaud the work being done by the Katie and Life team. I don't necessarily ever have anything negative to say with stuff that they've done. I don't mm -hmm. at all. But we got to get to this. And like I said, this is kind of a broken record. The GPU acceleration, that has been a yeah. back burner thing with Katie and Live and that team since I can remember. Like as far mm -hmm. back as like, are we going to get some type of, you know, timeline acceleration export for H264, 65? It, it, we're running out of road to kick that can down at this point, you know, and I know somebody will chime in like, you could try the experimental move it, which has been experimental for like five years. But all that <laughs> yeah. does is continues to be basically an RNG to lock your system or crash Katie and life simulation button. So... <laughs> For me, I, I would like to see some project outside of like Sine Really Erla Guga. Sine Lira. You didn't do it right. You got to go Guga at the end. Sine <laughs> CC. And because um, they're starting play around with some hardware and coding support. Yes. For me, doing any type of workflow, I'm looking at the difference between like two and a half to three hours versus. 18 minutes mm -hmm. and yeah. that yeah. I can't make that compromise, you know, and you know, I'd love them. It was like, I right, just do all open source. Cause I, I, I pissed and groaned about getting <laughs> DaVinci cause no one sits back and goes, Hey man, I want to learn an entirely new software package. But <laughs> having <laughs> that bandwidth now I can do other stuff and we can do other stuff, but yeah. Yeah. And just moving up, you're going to hit that point. You know, you're going to start recording. It's think about that all that time. That time's going to double if you're using uh, UHD, if you're doing 4K. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, oh, I've dealt with that. Yes. You know, over <laughs> the <laughs> <Z> vertical <laughs> pixels, <laughs> twice the horizontal pixels. Ex yeah. Exactly. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, hopefully, hopefully, work will be done that in the future. But as I originally said, it's great for like cutting up if you're doing a little quick video or something like that. 100% easy to use. Great program. Mm -hmm. I think I covered Wonderful. all my bases. Somebody's still going to yeah. blow me up on something. System <laughs> 76. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so this is great. So System 76 has been working on integrating open form firmware in their systems for quite some time. And now their hard work has come to fruition. Yay! They introduced two new Intel Comet Lake Linux laptops with Core Boot Open Firmware, which was, of course, formerly known as Linux BIOS, which replaces the traditional proprietary BIOS firmware. The new 14-inch Galaga Pro and 15.6-inch Darter Pro laptops feature System76 Open Firmware based on Core Boot, EDK2, System76 firmware apps, and your choice of their wonderful Pop! OS or Ubuntu. And, the, you know, the laptops actually are not completely open yet, as there are still some proprietary Intel binary blobs. But this gets System76 and Carl Rochelle's dream of completely open source software and harder, hardware uh, closer to that dream and uh, along with their wonderful Thelio desktops. And yeah, unfortunately, currently AMD does not support core, core boot. They did at one time, but they stopped support for it. But they are in the process of doing so. So we should start seeing some AMD uh, Ryzen computers from System76 as well. And they are working on this issue and announced plans to support core boot. Um, AMD has on their AMD Ryzen processors at the most recent open source firmware conference that was held in September. And I watched some of the keynotes from that, and it was a really good convention. Um, it was kind of the first of its kind, too. That was awesome. <laughs> Pedro, as the collector mm -hmm. of um, lonely <laughs> misfit laptops, what are your thoughts on this, man, with the whole cool thing? I know, right? Well, uh... Core boot is a very good idea, and uh, mm -hmm. much like you and uh, Jill already mentioned the AMD thing, I'm very much looking forward to having um, 
more Ryzen laptops. We kind of need those. Mm -hmm. uh, and I hope that this work that um, System76 has been doing to open core boot uh, to as many laptops as possible. Right now, they only have these two, but hopefully more will be coming in the future. And I really hope that it'll benefit not just uh, their uh, laptops, but everyone else in the community because you know yes. open source and they managed to get yeah. uh, they managed to get a system that people could easily do that to their own machines that would be amazing because right now getting core boot on a laptop is not easy at all mm -mm. uh no. so yeah that is the mm -hmm. bit of work that i personally want to see being done it's like actually letting people set up core boot or libre boot if you happen to have a um, laptop that does work completely uh on completely open source firmware that mm -hmm. would be very very nice to see it's pretty interesting yeah. um you know mm -hmm. system 76 they're doing their own desktops do you think they're we're, we're going to see that tooling um come around so they'll start making laptops that look like a an atari from the 70s <laughs> yes. they could totally do the wood grain it... laptops yes oh, I think that'd be nice. will buy them man the... hey oh, i'd yeah. like that Thaleo, uh, laptop yeah <laughs> that'd be great well then it would make sense to have like the machined um uh what do you, the in the back man the cover plate where they machine that out io panel Pedro. Oh, yes. Oh, oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was more confused. He, he turns his head sideways like a dog sometimes. I'm like, come on, man. <laughs> no. The input output, yes. <laughs> so that's a beautiful thing. Uh, one last thing before we get into a slice of pie. Ploopy. No, it's not a bad word. It's not. Okay. I heard Ven say that word. Uh, I'm yeah. good. That's I'm just okay. not good. <laughs> it's Plooping Co, man. A trackball mouse. <laughs> unlike a regular mouse. Uh, because it's got a trackball on it. Mechanical files, PCBs, and firmware is all included. So you too can have a Ploopy trackball. And <laughs> I know, right? Show title. Um, GPO V3, the hardware is it, it's all together. What does it look like? Let's take a look. Uh, it looks like a trackball. Yeah. Yep. Uh, it kind of like okay if, if you squint a little bit maybe do I do I have a single shot you can see the credits yeah. <laughs> kind of like that a little bit yeah, yeah. it's so, a little smaller a few less and... buttons but yeah. yes <laughs> so if you want to play around with that I mean you can if you want to get one you can get in like kit form like hey I'm gonna stick this thing together it's 3D printed uh, it's complete but what I like is completely open source. Also mm -hmm. going to say, man, getting used to scrolling with your thumb like that sucks. Um, yeah. I'm doing it right now. So if you get the pre-built, the only thing I want to point out is that's ploopy.co. It's a bit on the pricey side. Uh, a little bit. 199 Canadian. That's like $74 US, man, which is a bit mm -hmm. much. <laughs> <laughs> See, I looked at it uh, from the UK and it said two hundred dollars US. So go figure. Uh, the yeah, no, two hundred is a bit much, and for someone like me who uses the gerbil on the left hand, you, yes, I don't see the left-handed variant. It's 3D, Adult. you lazy punk. Just flip it, cat, and print it out. Yeah, there you go. Make a new SDL file. Oh, okay. So just grab the prints, mirror yeah. them, and uh, print the new shell for it's it. Okay, easy gotcha. As yeah. You hit the mirror button and just print, and it comes out like that. It's fine, man. <laughs> We, we we might have to get some wires and do some things with the uh, PCB, but we'll, we'll, don't worry about it. We'll worry about that later. That's fine. <laughs> I don't mind doing that. It's just left-handed variant, yo. That that that'd be nice. Do you find that? Mm -hmm. what, what, what's the internet over? Because I remember when um, gerbils first got contour. Like Logitech was really one of the first mass market. And it's like, ooh, that's neat. Um, before that, everything was ambidextrous. It was just a pock ish yeah. mm -hmm. type thing. Um, are those still around or does everything look like a little jet plane because they're trying to sell it to real Kramers? Yeah, everything looks ones. like, yeah, yeah uh, everything looks like um, jet planes, but they're curved. And if you so much as try and rest your left hand and use the mouse like that, you'll get cramps almost mm. immediately. Cramps <laughs> or crabs? <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> Bonus. Um. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, go ahead and eat seafood. Beautiful people. Uh, Aww. Before we get into the slice of pie, I want to thank each and every one of you <laughs> making this show possible, the people who are supporting us. By doing that, by going over to patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. You can also check out our website, LinuxGamecast.com, where we got Amazon stuff, we got Wish Zones, we got Libra Pay, we got t shirts. Mm -hmm. I should have worn t shirts. Yeah. Uh, maybe I'll do that next week. It's got to awesome. Keep us loud, live, independent, and most importantly, commercial free. So we can, you know, it's a weird little freeware experiment that we have. Mm -hmm. Like if you like it, maybe kick us some coin. If you don't, that's cool too. We'll still love you. Get access to our Discord. You can customize RSS feed and all that. As um, a member joining through Patreon, that helps us like set a budget so we can get away with wild, yeah. insane stuff. Pedro, what did you do Tuesday? Because we like to, we do more than just this show. We do Tuesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, yeah. Saturdays. <laughs> Five days. That's a full working week of uh, extra bits of content that you get to enjoy. And yeah, yesterday I played some Noita, which uh, apparently, according to Google Translate, is Finnish for witch. And it makes sense because you play as a spell casting character using wands and levitating all over the place. And that was yeah, an the, incredibly flatulent witch. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, the, that game was very interesting and I've been following that for a while. You can go watch the stream. It's uh yeah, it was really nice, but don't you worry. Um OpenMW will return next week. <laughs> and another mm. thing we were able to do, we had uh Cybic who's currently in Japan, but Yay. that doesn't stop him from being like, I'm still watching everything about my We talked <laughs> yeah. to him. Uh he helped That's uh, awesome. he continues to help. The Skullgirls yes. uh, port that came to Linux, keep that building. And he was the one who ported the game that was um, came out last week, Indivisible. Yeah. So we spent about 20 minutes picking his brain and loving every minute of it. And he also explained why he loves OpenGL and he thinks it's the mm -hmm. future for gaming. And some <laughs> of that might not be entirely <laughs> accurate. So I suggest you go and watch it yourself. All right. <laughs> Plugs are over. It's time yeah. for pie. That's kind of an embroidered mm. piece Minimal of pie. embroidered Is that pie. embroidered or is it a 3D render? Yeah, yes. it looks like a... <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, uh, this one is very much being rendered, and this is an huh? interactive tabletop RPG. Uh, I will, uh, of course, let uh, Jill explain exactly what uh, Roll20 is. She is the one. kind of sounds like the <laughs> name of a film that you might not take a kid to go see. Yeah, <laughs> but what they uh, what they did here was basically they hooked up a Raspberry Pi to an old uh, monitor and then built a wooden frame around it and they just set Chromium to auto start in full screen and going to roll 20 and now they basically get to um, play their uh, tabletop games directly on the screen with all the interactivity which roll 20 confers and it's awesome to see that they actually managed to get um, Roll20 to work properly, and it works uh, because uh, Raspbian comes with uh, Chromium out of the box. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it works just fine, and you get to have that actual visual representation without having to draw on it or come prepared with a stack of yes. mats to lay down <laughs> to put the figurines on. Yeah. Very nice to see. <laughs> yeah. I do got to ask a question. Really um, awesome. <laughs> what's a Roll20? Okay. Well, a Ro Roll20 is is a website where you can host games, um, uh, Dungeons and Dragons and the like, and Lasers and Feelings and, and whatnot. And it allows you to, uh, it mathematically c calculates your roles during the game and your maps. But do they and have one that calculates move... based on feelings? Yes, yes, well, that's what, <laughs> you what can laser calculate and feelings. Your feelings. Hey, yes. man, I want you have to do it with... calculations. <laughs> you have to do it with, uh, you know, uh, your dexterity, your strength, and, and whatnot. But it's a, a really good system, and we've been using it uh, for our tabletop RPGs virtually on Jordan's stream. So we've been doing it over the internet and it works beautifully. And it's a very, you know, similar concept. The Roll20 is a very similar concept to, to this project, but this project's in IRL. So it's neat. So it yeah. takes it and combines <laughs> the two. <laughs> Remember, kids, playing games in person is better because you it's easier to... <laughs> 
enforce threats. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really, really going to need you to reroll that. No, 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 no. That's not a threat. Nonverbal threats. You, you have to, you have to communicate that someone's about to go out the window without saying. <laughs> Just kidding. Then you give him a hug. Um, <laughs> hey, if and a drink, uh, right? <laughs> I mean, it's least you could do. You just threw him out a window. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh. If you got uh, something cool that you want to tell us about, and maybe ideas, thoughts, hints, allegations, things better left unsaid, got something right, got something wrong. How do they do that with magical? Um, well, you could actually be very clever and write it down on a roll 20 that it would show up on one of uh, Jordan's uh, yeah. Thursday streams, but chances are we're probably going to miss it. So why not go to linuxgamecast.com, hit the contact button and uh, fill out the form. Yeah, the Black Fan already said, send us your projects, anything that you've been working on, even if it's a teeny tiny little software thing. Hey, we you've can do been the relationship working on. advice. You can send us projects and problems. Yes. Ah, there we go. Yes. <laughs> Jordan will be happy to help you if you do. Well, what's the best uh, power supply for this PCB? Also, man, we got to talk about my daughter. All right, man. Aww. <laughs> so tell me about your mother. <laughs> right. <laughs> I blow you up like that. Aww. Beautiful people. You can also drop us a line on YouTube comments, Twitter. The only thing about that, there's no guarantee on that. And I'm not saying that. It's like, because I know. It's like, that's the preferred way I like to communicate. And we like that. And there's been more times than not. I'm like, I'm going to add that to the show. A week later, squirrel. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, <laughs> you use that contact every once <laughs> When you use the contact form, man, we get that email. It goes direct. If it needs to go to Pedro or Jordan, myself, or Jill, it'll get directed that way. And it's also in the inbox when I go to check to make the notes for the shows. So, <laughs> yep, life hack on that. Now, you might be wondering why Orn's watching the show live today. It's because he sent in a message. And as, as anyone does, when you send in a message to a show, you make sure to watch at least that one. Yes. Yep. And uh, with this one, he asked, uh, what's the point of Electron if you're going to just target Mac with your product? What's the point of telling people to use Wine to use your Electron app when Electron was made to mitigate this very issue in the first place? I hate software. None in particular, just in general. <laughs> also, anyone who recommends a terminal emulator um, made with Electron should just stop and go live in the woods or something. <laughs> I should go live in the woods in the outskirts of Madrid. Okay, that by all means go live into what's in the outskirts of Madrid, uh, Orn. But I do agree with you. That mm -hmm. yes, uh, this was the point that Electron was supposed to uh, resolve. Uh, you're using Chrome or Chromium, the um, Chrome embedded uh, framework, to make an application that runs inside a browser that no one gets to know it's a browser. It just runs. You wherever know Microsoft's going made. to find a way to make Edge Electron app. Oh, right. oh yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're already, <laughs> they're already doing that. <laughs> it's going to be Max Level from Redmond. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, or and also, it, it, if you like, you can electron wrap your desktop as well with the Jade desktop uh, on Manjaro. <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot about that one. <laughs> Yes, there is an Electron uh, desktop environment. Yes. <laughs> you see Orn living in Sweden is not all that bad. There, there's extra layers. You can, it can get darker. That yes. <laughs> it gets darker quicker, that's for sure. <laughs> Ken writes in, Hey man, I got a question about the copyright. Is Linux Gamecast mm -hmm. released under Creative Commons license? Question mark, period. Nice. You know, I, I like it when people put in, you know, just in case. It's like, you know, here's an extra period. You know, just for free, man. I can do anything I want with it. Um, I want to include um, CC shows in a flyer for OGCAM. That's right now. Hey. It, it is its default. All rights reserved. True. Let me tell you why it was. Let me tell you what it was. There's a logic behind that. If you looked on, you know, any of our RSS feeds for the shows or anything like that, it's copyright, Linux Gamecast, LLP, Limited Liability Partnership, Legal Stuff. 
Because the, hear, hear me out, is the type of person who doesn't care. It could say, I'm going to come find you. <laughs> They're just going to do whatever they want with it anyway. The other the option too is type person's like, hey man, I noticed that copyright, but I would like to use this. Hmm. Then you know what they're going to do with it. Then you're like, no, man, everything we release um, for Linux Schemecast Weekly, it's like, yeah, man, it's Creative Commons. You're like, well, you should just change that. And the reason I haven't is because I like to know what people are up to, the type of people who would care, you know? Mm -hmm. So <laughs> it's it has been my sneaky, sneaky way of like, oh, so you're using the thing. Like, that's cool. <laughs> The reason I bring that up is I went ahead and flipped all the bits, so everyone from now on knows I just do what you will with it, which you could anyway. It's CCBYSA. <laughs> so Creative Commons show, like, you can use it commercial. Nice. And this is anything we do in the web zone, anything we stream, all of our audio. It's always been like that. You know, I, mean, mm -hmm. I know we've had yeah. that question come up before on LGC <laughs> Weekly. Yes. Somebody very snidely asked, like, oh, why? oh, I assume everything's just Creative Commons. Yeah, it is, dude. <laughs> you know, then they smoke bomb because they were just trying to catch you in something. Yep. Yep. Um, that's why your yeah. support is very valuable to us because that's how we make our money. Um, that's pretty cool, man. That's awesome. Yeah. I, yeah. Og Camp. I've never heard of it. I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> the good thing about it is Pedro has an entire year to come up yes. with an excuse to why he can't be there next year. Oh, <laughs> no, no, he's going to be there next year. Next year I'm going. Yeah. <laughs> next year I'm going. It's just that, yeah, last month, I just too I, much. I put together a, uh, a bit of a computer. Shoes. And this month, Nori uh, is like, yeah, I need to buy some stuff. Don't, don't leave out the shoes. Oh, crap. <laughs> oh, yeah. The, the, the boots, I already had the money set aside for that. <laughs> that had been Aww. saved up for a while. <laughs> That's how long Zolliver took. <laughs> it's, it's hierarchy of importance. Don't worry. P Pedro will find something to buy by next Aww. year. Be like, you know, I had to get a car. <laughs> that would be nice. You see, see I, if that was my problem, I, I, I'd yep. be well freaking off. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful people, we gotta get out of here. Um, we're gonna roll some credits and yeah. say goodbye. Maybe we are. <laughs> Bye. Bye bye. Hey, Jordan, we need to have Ben Stone as our DM for our, our next uh, <laughs> campaign. <laughs> I'd love to have Ben as a DM. <laughs> <laughs> it might be scary, but <laughs> uh, it'd be interesting to see how many times uh, Ven leans over to Jordan. So, how do I make them do this? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Very well. Yeah. Yeah, because somehow that'd be quicker than googling it. <laughs> Aww. We love you, our all, all our beautiful we executive producers, of... and we love you all our executive ah, producers two, man. Come on. and producers <laughs> y'all are amazing You're come amazing. back next week yes. we love My you bye-bye <laughs>